Welcome to another week of the Open Alliance Show. Starting out, we got two fantastic teams on together, 4522 Teen Screen and 4766 Teen Screen Junior to showcase their current progress. Teen Screen is going to be jumping in all about their CAD progress right now, some of the prototypes like the one you see on screen, and lots more to talk about, even design failures and autonomous as well. And then Teen Screen Junior will be on, talk more about their current CAD updates and how they're choosing to go solely for the amp versus the speaker. Let's find out more about these teams coming up here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Welcome on to the Open Alliance Show coming in from Missouri. Well, we got two teams joining us today. 4522 Team Scream, and then a little bit later we'll be hearing from 4766 Team Scream Junior. They had a phenomenal year uh, last year as well, too. I hope you follow them all the way through. It's some interesting uh, playoff play, I remember, between these two teams as well. So I'm really excited to hear uh, from both these teams and dive into what they've been working on right now. We're going to be talking about um, strategies, CAD overview, prototype designs, uh, what hasn't worked as well, too, autonomous modes, and also uh, jumping in the I mentioned CAD for both the teams as well, too. So we have three students uh, so far. We got Got a couple more joining us, but students, if you don't mind, can you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team, and we'll hop right in. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Parker. I'm the team captain, and uh, I'm also the head machinist on the team. Uh, hi, I'm Jameson. I'm part of the 4522 engineering team. Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm a part of the 4522 engineering team as well. Well, I'm so excited to jump into some awesome topics with you. Let's start out with uh, overall strategies for your team. Can you? Uh, Tell us a bit more about uh, how both your teams are approaching this year's Crescendo game, and then we got so much more to dive into as well. Yeah, so um, having two teams, both of them approaching are approaching the game a little bit differently. So our senior team, 4522, uh, we are approaching it. We're trying to be a versatile robot that's able to score anywhere, the amp and speaker. And then for 4766, our junior team, they're going to be focusing on amp scoring. When you were looking um, at at this game and what you want to focus on, uh, how was that priority system set up for your team? Like, where you kind of narrow down, like, hey, especially for like Teen Screen Junior, like we're mainly going to be an amp bot. Uh, what made you really want to choose that route? Uh, for forty seven sixty six, we really wanted to choose that route for them um, because we wanted them to be a good alliance partner, and so that was really the push: is if we can have one robot that's able to amp really well, then we're able to. Uh, be a good alliance partner for and get picked. Very cool, Matt. And has that strategy changed at all since uh, you'll have uh, gone into the crescendo season as we are close to three weeks in? Uh, no, the strategy hasn't changed. Uh, we like to start with a really strong strategy and then design from there. Well, let's jump into the CAD overview uh, for 4522. I'm excited to hear more about this. I've been following your OA blog and, and your post for that. You had some renderings that we showed on screen, but here's the actual CAD itself. So let's jump in uh, to what you want to cover uh, in regards to your CAD progress. Okay, so we're starting from just the bottom up. This is our chassis design. So we've gone with swerves. We've done uh, Mark IV eyes, level three gearing. We've also made our belly pan real deep. We're going to put all of our electronics real low, keep our center mass real low. Then we've opted for a under the bumper intake. There we go. So our under the bumper intake is just right out there in front of our swerves. And it's just basically an attachment to our chassis. From there, working up, we've decided to go with an elevator just to help us reach all of those spots on the uh, field, whether it be the speaker or the trap or the uh, amp. Uh, mounted onto our uh, elevator, we have our shooter box. So we thought we'll just hand off from our under the bumper intake into this backside of the shooter right here. And then from there, we can either feed it up to our flywheels and we can shoot it into our speaker, 
or we've actually decided we can amp scar our amps in our traps out of this backside, just push it right back out at whatever pivot we need. For in game, we've gone with our climbers and we've gone with more of a sliding or a slider. So they just slide up whenever we need them to. And whenever we need them, oh, there we go. They'll slide up and then whenever we need a climb, we'll just slide them down and we'll be able to reach our trap. I want to talk about the amp scoring uh, for this robot a little bit more. What angle then are you actually delivering uh, that note into? Because I know in testing, at least with the R3D team, I was with Cranberry Alarm, you really had to get more of that downwards angle. So um, so I see on there, is uh, are, is that actually pivoting it up and then going downwards? Or can you dive a bit more yeah. into that? So we have it extending upwards, and then we can change our pivot downwards a little bit if we need. Uh, our goal, though, is our wheels at the end, we're hoping uh, to angle our note downward into the trap or the amp. So that way it'll go, we can have our shooter horizontal and still score that way. And how about from a climber aspect? What are you looking at doing from there? Uh, whenever we climb. So our climber is just these, they're just linear. I guess they go on these guides. Hold on. I'll get the rest of it in there for you. And so they'll just slide upwards uh, over that chain. And then whenever we need to climb, they'll just be pulled down by a pulley and our winch in the back. So this CAD seems fairly complete here. Uh, what point are you actually at in regards to uh, CAD completion? Um, so we've decided to take more of a approach on less clunky prototyping and more of a full robot type of prototyping. So we sat down and spent a lot more time working on the nitty gritty details, trying to get a more full scale prototype. So we've actually made, I believe three different shooters and we're working on, I think a fourth right now. Uh, and we are currently building the entire robot, um, yeah, we're, we're making the entire robot crew, or actively. I think that's a great uh, transition to talk about some of your uh, prototypes uh, as well, too. So can you uh, dive into a bit more uh, in regards to where you're at right now for prototypes? Uh, you know, show off some of the different options for it. I know we got some YouTube videos that we'll show uh, for that as well, too. And then uh, uh, if there's anything uh, in person that you also want to show, I know you got your dry base right there. Yeah, so this is the chassis that we've been using to kind of map out our autos and stuff, but also to test some of our other things. So this is a custom plate that we made to go on top of our swerves. We like to have that modularity, so we like to ha have hot swappable swerves, and this just makes it that much easier. And it also kind of gives more uh, robustness to it. Um, but this will connect on top of that like that, and then this is the wrong side of it, but this goes right here and it just kind of goes and everything is within our bumper so we don't really need to leave or anything so really really cool with that from the integration of it um and then from your shooter prototypes you mentioned a few of those before um what can you uh, detail off for those um we have one of our prototypes right now that didn't really end up working for us oh this is heavy do you want to help me yeah um, so we kind of have like, it's really heavy. <laughs> we have these rollers on it that we just realized aren't going to work for what we want to do. Um, but this was the amp side of it and the note was just going to slide out, but we had to change that to move more towards wheels. Uh, one, of the other, one of the other things you mentioned was uh, in regards to, you know, some things that didn't work out. Um, it, was there anything else on your robot that you decided to go a different direction with or you saw it didn't quite work out that maybe other teams can learn from? Uh, I know that at the beginning of the season, we were looking very heavily into over the bumper intakes. And we kind of just had this epiphany one day. It's like, why do we need to go over it when we have all this room underneath? So that was a quick shift. And I think that that's yeah. worked very well so far. We also anticipate a lot of bumper to bumper contact in this game. So this kind of just lets us keep everything inside. So we don't really have to worry about stuff getting broken as much. 
Um, and then looking at, uh, you know, further on your robot, uh, let's jump into autonomous routines and what your team is uh, looking at doing for that. Uh, so I know we got a few videos that we'll show uh, in regards to some of your pathing uh, for that as well, too. And uh, I think we're bringing another student as well, too. Uh, so I think Jordan's going to come on. So Jordan, uh, let us know what you do on the team, by the way, and let's talk about auto. Uh, so hello, I'm Jordan. I'm one of the two four five two two programmers. Um, we have been heavily working with autonomous paths as well as working with the other subsystems just as they're creating them to pro as they program to program the prototypes. Um, so one of the first paths that we made was the four piece um, the close side. So we score our preload into the speaker and then we will score the uh, three close pieces closest to the speaker and score those in the shoot as well. So let's take a look at that uh, on screen if you can uh, detail a bit. Uh, what that padding is like. And then uh, something I want to ask you is like, what were from, you know, we talked about strategy and objectives uh, earlier. Uh, what was like, where do you want to be at in regards to notes? Cause we keep seeing that barrier being pushed more and more and more from teams, right? Where does uh, uh, team scream or, or scream junior want to be in regards to how many notes you get? Um, so our hope is to have a very diverse amount of notes that we can choose based on our Alliance partners. So right now we can show our four piece, but we also have a video of a six piece that we can also show. And our hope is to be able to run at least the six note and maybe later on in the season get to further ones like seven notes, but also be able to run four or five pieces from the opposite sides and ignore the close notes so that the other Alliance members can run their close note autos because we believe that a lot of other teams will have those sort of autos that I'm about to show. So walk us through uh, what's actually happening in this uh, and what are you doing from a, a programming standpoint to do your pathing? Yeah, so we're using a path planner for all of our autos. So this one, we just start from the beginning of the front of the subwoofer and then we're moving towards the podium to pick up that piece. And then we move to the second note that's in between and then move to the third one from there. And, and then, then you said you got a six piece as well too. I'm really interested to see that. Yes. And then for our six piece path, we actually run the same initial start as the four piece. And then we just continue it on towards the center line. So we run to the podium and then to the second note, the third note, and then towards the center line for the next two. And what about, uh, you know, f future plans for that? Um, are you looking to do any, any uh, alternative types of scoring uh, or uh, any other considerations in regards to auto? Um, so for autonomous, like I said, we want to be able to run ones that are strictly to the center line and ignore the close ones so that our alliance members can use those, but also to more than likely have the opportunity to score in the amp and start that amplification early, as well as getting a speaker shot right off the bat. And then is there anything from outside of autonomous that you're considering in regards to doing any sort of uh, like tracking or using the April tags or anything like that, all that you can dive into? Uh, yeah, so we'll use the April tags um, to climb in the end game so that we can line up our target and our climber so that we get a direct lock towards the trap placement. And then we'll also use the April tags for localization and we hope to be able to shoot um, during our paths like during teleop and we can just automatically adjust the angle for quicker shots and accuracy. We talked a lot about Team Scream, but there's also Team Scream Junior as well too, 4766, who, as I mentioned, had an incredible season uh, as well. So we're going to bring on uh, Sarah uh, to talk more about the uh, CAD for uh, 4766. So welcome, Sarah. Let us know what you do on the team. Hi, I'm Sarah. I do, I'm representing the engineering design team, or part of it, for 4766. Cool. And let's uh, let's jump into your CAD. Talk to me about uh, what direction your team's going. We heard earlier that you're looking at more primarily of an AMP uh, type score in there. So I'd love to jump into that and showcase more about what you're doing. Okay. So here we have our block CAD. It's very conceptual, uh, but it's representing how we have a shooter and conveyor part rep on a pivot. It'll intake from an under the bumper intake and it'll convey up through our shooter box. And we'll have flywheels on the end that will, if backed up to the subwoofer, we can shoot into the speaker. Uh, but when our arm is pivoted up, it'll go at a 
more of a downwards angle to shoot into the amp. Um, and then we will have telescoping arms on the sides of our frame. And uh, has your team started anything from assembly yet, or are you still currently in CAD phase? Um, so we are still working on our CAD. We have different subsystems on our team. As we have nine members, we have div divided our team up into three different subsystems. We have a chassis intake and superstructure team, shooter box team, and climber. Uh, so our shooter assembly is the load. Um, we have rollers that will intake a note from the intake uh, and it'll convey along the bottom of our shooter box. And then we have flywheels towards the end, which will, an, which gives us the ability to shoot into the speaker and down into the amp at an angle. And then we have our frame, which our shooter box rests on. Do you have um, a, a typical goal or objective in regards to like how many cycles uh, that you're looking at doing uh, in a match? Because with amp scoring, I, I wonder if you, you know, it can be such a specialist in that that you're just going to get so many notes scored, and it could be such a great way to go about this game. Yeah. So our main objective is to be short, fast, and we want to go across the field very quickly and get as many notes as possible. Um, some Sarah, I'll ask you just something a little bit different. Uh, were you on Teen Screen Junior last year? I was. Okay, so if memory serves me correctly, uh, I know your team, that Team Screen Junior beat Team Scream at least once, and I know you got two regional ones, so I don't remember if it was twice or not, uh, but it was twice, wasn't it? I think so. Uh, so yeah. so how, talk to me about that, uh, uh, the, you know, working with, you know, Team Scream uh, as part of Team Screen Junior, like how do your two teams work together and how good did it feel last year to beat them a couple times? Um, it was definitely interesting last year. Um, our robot was very different from 4522s, um, but this year we're taking uh, a little bit more inspiration from them in terms of how we want to score things and the mechanisms that we're using. Yeah, last year we had, I think it was a really fun season. I was actually part of the drive team. I was drive coach for 4766 last year. Nice. And it was, I would say that this year, I'm excited. I hope that Junior will compete at a high level and it'll be fun again this year. Yeah, and Team Scream had a great year last year too as well too, winning the Bayou Regional. So uh, Team Scream and Team Scream Junior, thank you so much for taking the time. Tell us more about your team's current progress on your robot. It's awesome to see where you're at and make sure you do check out their Open Alliance blog on Chief Delphi as well too. And we can't wait to see your progress continue to keep moving forward. Thanks a lot, y'all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.